it totally looks like I'm not wearing pants in that thumbnail, <laughs> but I am. I'm wearing shorts actually. They're pajama shorts and they're pink, but it totally looks like I'm pantless. Sorry about that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Oh Baby Thursday. This is a very special Oh Baby Thursday because I am posting it on my due date. <gasps> I'm pre-filming obviously. Well, maybe not obviously, but I'm pre-filming. I'm currently 36 and a half weeks pregnant, almost 37 weeks pregnant. Here is my baby bump. He's big. He's bumping. Look at that. Holy moly. Just when you think you can't get any bigger, you literally just keep getting bigger, you guys. <sighs> but anyways, um, yeah, September 5th today is my due date. More than likely, at least fingers crossed, positively thinking, I hope I have already had the baby by now. I'm about to tell you why. So let's hop into the update. Okay, so in this video, I plan to tell you all about my third trimester. I'm technically still in the third trimester. You are in the third trimester until you have your baby. But theoretically, I could have my baby any day now and he would be healthy and he would be fine. Um, 37 weeks is full term and according to my midwife, she thinks I'm going to have him anywhere between 39 weeks and 42 weeks. <sighs> I'm praying for earlier than that, you guys, because it is the dead of summer right now. And I live in North Carolina where it is humid and hot and holy moly is it, it is just uncomfortable. I have reached the point in my pregnancy where literally everything hurts. Everything hurts. My back hurts. My side hurts. My legs hurt. Um, my head sometimes hurts. Actually, my head hasn't been too bad. My arms hurt. My tummy hurts. It's stretching in weird places. My boobs hurt. My feet hurt. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. I can't get comfortable. I can't sleep. I can't find a comfortable position to sleep in. Everything is just large and heavy and uncomfortable. And something that nobody told me that I didn't expect is that other parts of my body were going to get bigger. I mean, obviously you gain weight and you put on weight and you put on weight in places that you typically would put on weight. So like when I gain weight, my face gets fat. That's just how it is. So I knew my face was going to get rounder. I knew I was going to get chubbier cheeks. I was going to get a fatter neck. Like I knew that was going to happen. But what I didn't expect to get bigger were my thighs. My legs and my thighs have gotten huge huge you guys like so big to the point where my maternity pants aren't big enough anymore leggings are the only thing that I can comfortably fit in and nobody warned me of that I also was never warned of cellulite um, I didn't know that that was gonna happen I've never really had cellulite before uh, but since my thighs have gotten so big I have gotten cellulite on the front of my thighs the front of my thighs the back of my thighs the side of my thighs all have cellulite it's not pretty and I really hope it goes away after the baby is born but that was something that nobody warned me about and so I guess I just reached the point where I feel like I am so big everything is uncomfortable and I'm just ready for this baby to come I'm gonna evict him soon <laughs> but I also know how important it is for him to bake to completeness but anyways I thought I would go through and just kind of tell you guys how things have been going I have some notes written here on my phone that I'm going to bring up to kind of walk through. Um, so let's see. The first note I have in here is really slowing down. Yes, I am really, really slowing down. I feel like up until about 32 weeks, I still had a ton of energy. I still was able to do things fairly normally. I was able to go to the gym. I was able to keep up with Orange Theory. I was able to walk around. I didn't really have any swelling. Everything was totally fine. But then once I hit like 33 weeks, it was like, pff, like downhill. Like I started to get really slow. It takes me forever to get ready in the morning. It takes me forever to do things. I get winded and out of breath when I'm blow drying my hair. I walk slower. I just, I do everything slower. Um, I did stop going to the gym. I know a lot of you guys have been asking that, but at 35 weeks, I did freeze my Orange Theory membership and I have not been going to the gym since then. It just became very, very difficult, especially in a class like Orange Theory to keep up with everybody. Um, it just, it just became near impossible. Um, I'm just too large. I can't do the rower machine anymore. And so, and like the weight room, it just, it all just became too uncomfortable 
for me. So I stopped going at 32 weeks, oh, sorry, 35 weeks, but I am trying to maintain some sort of activity. So whether it's walking around or climbing the stairs or things like that, today I cleaned the house, which doesn't sound like a normal activity, but it took me a good four hours to clean the house and I was constantly up and moving and walking around, walking the dogs, things like that, getting out of my desk at work and walking around, just trying to maintain some sort of exercise, but I did stop going to the gym. Um, I did have, so I think I talked about this in my eight month update video, but at a certain point in my pregnancy, I did have some blood pressure issues. I think a lot of it had to do with work. I was very stressed at work. Um, luckily that's gone down and it hasn't been a problem since. So blood pressure is something that you really have to keep an eye on because of things like preeclampsia. Um, but luckily mine went down. Um, belly button pain. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. And I also talked about this in my eight month pregnancy update, but one of the parts of my belly that's been hurting the most is my belly button and it's so weird like I don't want to show you pregnant bellies are weird but like right on the top of my belly button and around my belly button has been the one area of my belly that has hurt the most as far as like stretching goes um it's so weird because I can tell when the baby is going through a growth spurt I can tell when my belly is getting bigger because my belly button hurts it's weird um so that's something I wasn't expecting. My belly button has remained an innie. Barely, but it's an innie. Um, so it didn't pop out, which is weird. I also haven't gotten any stretch marks, which is, knock on wood, incredible. <laughs> My midwife, I've seen a, I see like a rotational group of midwives. Um, they kind of rotate between appointments and stuff. Every single one of them has said, wow, I can't believe you haven't gotten stretch marks. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I have been putting oil on since like, six weeks I've been putting oil on my belly every single day whether it's cocoa oil or some sort of just oil in general um, and lotions so maybe that's helped maybe it hasn't but I haven't gotten any stretch marks which is really good um, the side pain and the back pain have been really 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 bad I've gotten really bad back pain especially more recently and I know it's because my belly is getting bigger and your belly I mean your back has to arch to support the belly and everything's just kind of weird and stretching and like different and so I mean it makes a whole lot of sense but my back has been in so much pain it gets in it it becomes more painful throughout the day um, my sides have been hurting quite a bit as well so in my eighth month video, I told you guys that my baby is sitting on the left side, sorry, the right side of my belly. So he um, has been sitting like right here for the past probably six weeks. His back and his spine are right here. He's head down, which is good, but his back and his spine are right here. His butt is usually like right around here and then all of his feet, arms, things like that are over here and his head is down here. So because he's been sitting on this side, that side has been hurting really bad and then because I've been going like this to accommodate the pain in that side this side has become very painful so the side pain and the back pain it, it, it all ties in together right because then I can't sit comfortably I can't lay comfortably it's all just a hot mess um so that's one thing the nausea has been something that has come back so I had nausea in early pregnancy um i never actually threw up which is really good i didn't get like morning sickness but i did have nausea and that started to come back around 33 weeks i started to get nauseous again um the midwife said it was pretty normal unless it's accompanied with high blood pressure because then you do worry about things like preeclampsia but she said it's pretty normal and it mostly accounts or what accounts for it is the fact that your baby is now sitting I mean, my uterus is literally up to my chest. <laughs> At this point, like it's, it's amazing that I can even breathe. So my uterus and my baby are all the way up here, which means my stomach is like in my chest. Like my stomach is like right here. So the fact that there's not a lot of room for things like food, it's pretty normal to be nauseous. Not to the point of throwing up, but to be nauseous is pretty normal, she said. Um, I had a decrease in appetite, and again, that's because there's not a whole lot of room. My stomach is all smushed. My intestines are all smushed. So decrease in appetite, um, increase in sweating and thirst. I have been sweating like crazy. <laughs> Unsurprising, right? Because it's summer and I'm nine months pregnant. Um, increase thirst. I feel like I can't get enough water. I just drink and drink and drink and drink and drink, which is good. You're supposed to. You're supposed to drink a lot of water, but like... I feel like I just can't get enough. I'm a dang camel. So <laughs> increased thirst, 
Acid reflux, again, all ties into the fact that my uterus and my baby are up here, and when I eat, it sits up here. It sits in my chest. My stomach is up here. And so, especially if I lay down right after I eat, the food just kind of, kind of like throw up in my mouth a little bit. Um, <laughs> I notice a lot at nighttime when I'm trying to sleep, I get a lot of acid reflux. It feels like there's lava coming out of my throat. It's disgusting. Um, it's not very pleasant. So that's kind of died down a little bit, but that was really bad there for a while. Um, let's see. Swollen feet. So I have, I've been really lucky and I haven't gotten a ton of swelling. My wedding ring still fits. Um, my normal shoes still fit sometimes. Rothy's have been amazing for me. They've stretched and kind of molded to my pregnant feet. As I get later in pregnancy, so early third trimester, I didn't experience a lot of sweating, but now, I'm sorry, swelling. But now in these last, like later weeks, I do get swelling pretty much every day my feet start to swell. Um, the only thing that really helps is putting them up. I drink a ton of water so I can't imagine drinking any more water is going to help. But really the only thing that helps is putting my feet up. So as soon as I get home from work I put my feet up and rest, um, at least I try to. And that's the only thing that really helps with my swelling. But I have been getting some swelling in my feet, not my hands. Um, I think that's it as far as symptoms go. I'm trying to think and I'm looking and I, I don't have anything else written down. I always forget to tell you guys something as far as symptoms go, but I, I feel like overall I can't complain. Um, this has been a relatively easy pregnancy. I think the third trimester by far has been the worst, way worse than the first trimester for me simply because I've gotten to the point where everything hurts. Everything hurts all the time. I do things so slowly. I can't do as much stuff in one day as I used to. I used to be able to clean the house, film videos, go shopping, run errands, edit videos, watch a movie, and cook dinner all in the same day. And like, I can't do that anymore. Um, it takes me forever to get ready in the morning. It takes me forever to do everything. On top of that, my body is getting bigger. My clothes don't fit. I've gained, I've gained 40 pounds, 40 pounds, which, <laughs> I know a lot of people have it worse, and I know it could be worse, but it's really difficult to see your body change. It's probably been the hardest thing for me in this whole pregnancy is watching my body change and watching my body get bigger. Um, I know it's for a good reason, and I know it's, it's fine, and I'll be able to lose the baby weight afterwards, but it's been very emotionally tolling to watch my body change and get so much bigger. It also accounts for why I've been slower. I'm just heavier. I have more weight on me. It's harder to walk up the stairs. It's harder to... Clothes don't fit, you know? So that's been really difficult, um, really difficult for me. As far as the back pain goes, also what I've noticed helps hot and cold alternating, but getting one of those belly bands. So I do have one of those belly bands. Um, I actually have it sitting right here because I was using it. Ooh earlier today but this belly band um i think it's by the brand belly bandit yeah has been super <coughs> use me Ooh. super helpful um i just kind of wrap it around my back and then tuck it under my belly and kind of velcro it like that there is a little pocket on the back where you can put an ice pack or a heat pack um, but this I use at work a lot and it seems to help. Um, but I think in the end the back pain is just not going to go away until I have the baby. <laughs> I think this just kind of is what it is. So there's that. So I wrote the belly bandit down. Um, as far as how the baby's going, so some of the things, so there's been two tests that I've had done in the third trimester. So the first one, it's not really a test, it was a shot, so the Tdap shot. So your um, midwife or OBGYN will recommend the Tdap shot, which is the whooping cough shot in your third trimester. They recommend it for mom as well as every single person who will come in contact with the baby while they're a newborn. So dad, grandparents, all of that stuff. So that's one thing. And then the group beta strep test which is a swab that's done right around 36 weeks. So those are the two tests that I have had done in the third trimester. Um, I think there are others uh, that you can do, but those are the only two that I did. Um, as far as how the baby's doing, so 
We did have a 34 week ultrasound done. Um, I was kind of talking in my eight month um, update about whether or not we were going to get the ultrasound done. So one of my midwives said yes, the other one said no. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for yes simply because I just wanted to see my baby. I haven't seen him since our 3D ultrasound which was done at like 23 weeks. So I just kind of wanted to see him. It had been a while since I seen his little face. Um, so I did end up getting the 34 week growth scan. So the purpose of that was to measure him to see if he's running big, running small, um, if my amniotic fluid was okay. So in that ultrasound, they measure the circumference of his head, his abdomen, and his femur on his leg. And then they do an average of that to tell me how big and how much he weighs and all of that. So at the time, which was 34 weeks, he was five pounds already. Um, he's only in the 62nd percentile, which I don't know how that compares. I mean, it's a 67 percentile, but... Um, my midwife was very happy with that. She said a lot of people nowadays are in like the upper range, like the 80, 90 percentile, which means they're going to have huge babies. So from 34 weeks on, your baby gains about a half a pound every single week. So if your baby, I mean, if my baby weighs five pounds at 34 weeks, he could potentially be an eight pound baby, which it's not that bad. It's actually pretty average, she said. But if your baby is in like the 90th percentile and weighs six pounds or seven pounds at 34 weeks, then you're going to have a big baby. You're going to have like an 11 pound baby. <laughs> so if they go to full term. So the fact that he was in the 62nd percentile is good. Um, my amniotic fluid was good. So that's all measured through the ultrasound. So essentially my ultrasound came out really, really good. Um, the one thing, so he's measuring a little bit big because he's 67 percentile instead of 50. 50 would be right on target. He's measuring one week and one day ahead, so it's very possible that he could be born early. I'm hoping he's born early. Ugh. Um, <laughs> please be born early. And I was told by my midwife that he could be born anytime after 36 weeks and he will be healthy, happy, um, and everything's going really, really well. So that's really good. Um, his Heartbeat has slowed down just a little bit since the beginning, so as your baby grows, their heart becomes larger and stronger. You think about a full-grown adult, our heart rate is anywhere between 60 beats per minute and 120 beats per minute. Um, babies, as their heart gets bigger and stronger, their heartbeat slows down a little bit, so it's right around 130, 120 right now, which is absolutely normal, absolutely perfect. Um, the one thing is he is positioned not in the most ideal position for birth, um, so I do plan on having a natural birth. Uh, I think most people plan on having a natural birth. C-sections are not usually planned, um, but because I am going through a midwife and not an OBGYN, um, natural birth is something that I hope to do. Um, I do plan on getting an epidural. <laughs> that is the one thing. I told the midwife, I was like, I'm not going through you if I can't get an epidural. So I do plan on getting an epidural but uh, and giving birth at a hospital. People get confused. I'm going to make a video all about midwife versus doctor, so we'll cover that then. But basically, so he is sitting on the right side of my uterus. Um, that is not the most ideal position for birth because when you water breaks and when you start to contract and go into labor, the baby will naturally rotate clockwise. So if the baby is sitting on your left side, they will rotate and then kind of stop here and then be born. And this is a perfect position. So back against <clears throat> your belly, their feet up against your back is the perfect position to give birth, head down. So if your baby's on the left side, they'll kind of naturally turn, naturally turn, stop. Perfect, right? But if he's over here, he has to make a 360 basically <laughs> to get into that proper position to then be birthed. So I have been given exercises to try to rotate him, to push him to the other side. Um, luckily, he's not sunny side up, which would be if he was like face forward, which I guess is worse, I've been told. Um, and if I go into labor and he's still on the left side, there's different techniques they can do to kind of flip the baby, um, spin the baby. 
after the epidural, the midwife will actually kind of put their hands in your uterus and kind of flip the baby if they need to. So there's different things that they can do, but it's just not ideal. Um, that's the only thing that is kind of hindering or like concerning about my pregnancy right now, but everything else is going good. And I feel so lucky and so blessed to have had such a good pregnancy. So I think that's everything. I think I wrote everything down. Um, oh, Braxton Hicks contractions. I didn't talk about that. I have had so many Braxton Hicks contractions, you guys. It is crazy. It's actually happened quite a bit when I'm at the doctor and I'll be laying back for them to do like the, where they measure your belly and they feel around. Um, and it's been twice already where the midwife is like, did you know you're having a Braxton Hicks right now? And I was like, no, I didn't know. Where it's just like extreme tightening and it's so tight that they can't feel the baby. So we have to wait a minute or two for the contraction to go away. Um, so I've had that, but then also just throughout the day at work, I've had a lot of cramping. I've had a lot of just my body getting prepared for birth. I've also had an increase in things like discharge, not the most glamorous, I know. Um, diarrhea, not the most glamorous, I know. But these are all normal things that my body is doing to get ready for labor. All completely normal. Um, it's a good thing. I haven't had the extreme nesting kick in yet. <laughs> so that's another thing they told me to watch out for was like, if you have a day where you feel like scrubbing the baseboards, then baby's coming really, really soon. I haven't had that yet. I guess I'll preface that with I'm always a clean person and I clean every weekend. Like today I cleaned and I was scrubbing the trash cans, but that's normal for me. <laughs> so I guess I will preface it that way. This eyelash is about to pop off. I can see it the corner of my eye, um, but yeah, so there's Braxton Hicks contractions, also movement of the baby, so he's moving a lot, but his kicks have turned into rolls, um, which also is normal because he's so cramped in there, there's not a whole lot of room and my uterus doesn't really have a lot of space to grow anymore, so um, yeah, the kicks have turned into more like rolls, so I'll kind of see like a little butt or a little foot or something kind of like roll across my belly, roll back. Um, and I do feel baby hiccups, which is also really cool. So baby hiccups and just lots of movement going on. Less kicks, but still similar type movements at the same time of the day. All good things. So I think that's it. Um, my midwife did give me some suggestions for in not inducing labor, but speeding up labor or bringing upon labor naturally. So eating dates is one of the things I've been told to do. Eat six dates a day and also drink las raspberry leaf tea were the two things that I was told. Um, there's a lot of things you could do to stimulate labor, uh, but those are the two things that I was advised to do. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I, I think that's it, so. I don't know, everything's ready. We have the nursery ready. Everything is ready. I'm ready for this baby to come. I just, now I'm just rambling. So I'm gonna stop. But if you guys have any questions for me, leave them in the comment section down below. This is going to be the last uh, Oh Baby video that you see of me pregnant. I think after this, I'm gonna start doing baby videos where I'll talk to you about my midwife experience, my labor story, all of that stuff. So if there's something you wanna see, Make sure you request it in the comment section down below, but if I do happen to squeeze in any more pregnancy videos, they're going to be more vlog style, um, but my mom is coming into town later this week, so I'm not going to really have a lot of time to sit down and film videos like this. In fact, I'm taking a break from YouTube for probably a good couple of months so I can give birth and <laughs> recover and figure out my new life and all of that stuff. Um, so this will be the last like formal oh baby video that you see where I'm sitting down and I have the camera and all that stuff but this is not the end of baby videos this is not the end of my channel it's just the end of formal oh baby videos for now um but I hope that you guys enjoyed following along on this little pregnancy journey with me and I think that's it mm, this is weird okay all right guys I'll talk to you next time